international news. Operation Lafia Dole requires effort in tackling insurgency as the personnel killed two three bombers in the day. Federal government restates commitment in providing affordable homes to Nigerians. Plus, landslide, landslide wreck havoc in Ethiopia kills more than 20 people. Thanks for joining us on the news on NT International, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. My name is Omini Odan. The military in recent times stepped up its campaign against the Boko Haram terrorists in the northeast. The range of operations are aimed at routing the remnants of Boko Haram terrorists who are seeking refuge in some remote locations in the forests. One of these operations carried out by troops of Operation Lafia Dole on Saturday involved troops of 159 Battalion, 27 Tax Force Brigade, troops of the unit acting on a piece of intelligence successfully executed a swift operation against suspected Boko Haram terrorist location in about seven villages in Maiduguri. The unit for the artillery bombardment operations west of Subdu village neutralized the concentration of the Boko Haram terrorists at Bulabulin and Alagono forests. A statement signed by the director of Army Public Relations Brigadier General Sami Kukasheka Usman says the offensive operations later dovetailed into cordon and such operation in four villages. Two female bombers have been shot dead by security personnel near Medugri, Bono State. The bombers, who are about 18 years of age, attempted to enter Medugri through Umare in Molai general area about nine kilometers to Medugri township. They were sighted by the civilian JTF and consequently shot dead by security personnel on duty at the area. No loss of life or injury was recorded. The police EOD team was mobilized to the scene to render the un unexplosive, unexploded IED safety while normalcy has been restored in the area. The Minister of State for Power, Works and Housing, Mustafa Baba, Shehuri has reaffirmed government's commitment in bridging the gap of housing deficit in Nigeria by making homes more available and affordable. This was during the inauguration of a housing estate in Karu, Nasarawa State. Suleiman Musa reports. Minister of State for Power, Works and Housing, Mustafa Baba Shehuri, gave assurance that the ministry will continue to strive to ensure that the challenge of housing deficit in Nigeria which has been put at 16 to 17 million units is surmounted. The completion of this asset at the peers across the country is a demonstration of the tangible achievement of this administration in the area of the provision of affordable housing for Nigerians. Nostra State Governor, represented by his deputy Salas Agara, says the state will continue to provide land and necessary logistics in supporting the federal government's mass housing scheme. This is a pay setter project, worth commending, worth emulating, and uh, we're on the same page with them. This is the ninth of series of mass housing across the country from Karu, Suleiman of Emusa, NTA News. Kebi State may further raise its profile in rice and other crops production as it strengthens partnership with the federal government to boost all year round farming in the state. Minister of Water Resources Suleiman Adamo visited Zeuru Polda Project, one of the platforms for dry season farming in the state. Mugma Danwahab reports. In Nigeria, lick rice is fast gaining grounds as a competitive alternative to imported rice. It is the end result of a partnership between two states, KB and Lagos. The initiative is described as unprecedented and a testimony of the success of federal government's anchor borrowers program designed to aid farmers and improve food production. From the mistakes we have learned through the last dry season farming, the next one is uh, certainly going to be a uh, better yield. In just another step forward in boosting all year round farming, the federal government, in partnership with the state, is invigorating the Zoro Powder Project. 
It is believed that the project will enable the state to maximize the opportunity of its vast and fertile land on the Rima River floodplain and double its yields through all year round farming. Though hundreds of rice, wheat, and other crops farmers are already benefiting from the powder project, the project still has the potential of about 10,000 hectares of irrigable land, as against barely over 100 hectares of land currently being cultivated. We, we produce about 200,000 metric tons of rice, but you see, including the catchment areas. Though funding the project has been a challenge since inception in 1982, the federal government is, however, considering completing it. They're also looking at uh, another area, uh, not exactly that, but still within the scheme, to develop another 250 hectares. Uh, very soon, the, the plan is already there. The traditional rulers of Gwandu and El Gungu, Mohammed Ilyasu Bashao and Samala Mohammed Mera, welcomed the project. From Bini Kibi, Musbal, and Wahab, NC News. With the relocation of airline operations from Abuja to Kaduna International Airport, the Nigerian Air Force is assuring the public of safety as they travel along the Abuja Kaduna route. Chief of Training and Operations, Air Vice Marshal. Ahmed Iya gave the assurance during an operational tour to Kaduna. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma tells us more. That report will be ready in the course of the bulletin. The National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, has deployed a rescue helicopter three mobile intensive care unit ambulances and three rapid intervention vehicles to Kaduna State to join other stakeholders in providing support for emergency operations in the state. The helicopter is to be used for medical patrol while the three ambulances with the rapid intervention vehicle care vehicles are stationed along Jere and Katari towns, Kaduna Abuja Road and Kaduna International Airport. The ambulances are used to administer first aid treatment and stabilization for trauma victims on their way to the hospital as it serves as a mobile hospital with the capacity to carry one critical and one less critical victim. The Federal Road Maintenance Agency FEMA is being lauded for steps taken in repair works on federal roads in the northeast region of the country. House of Representatives Committee on FEMA says, despite operational challenges, FEMA should brace up to come cover more roads. Ladi Bala reports. The House Committee Chairman Adamu Kamale, who noted with concern the deplorable nature of most roads, particularly in the Northeast, which has suffered infrastructural setbacks due to activities of insurgents, said the current administration is determined to give Nigerians a better deal. The oversight visit centered on monitoring of direct labor work by FEMA on patching of potholes and overlaying of asphalt on certain portions of the roads in all the three states visited. Road construction awarded to some firm currently ongoing were also inspected by the committee. While briefing the members, FEMA Zona Coordinator Northeast and all the contractors on sites identified inconsistency in release of funds and lack of availability of materials such as bitumen as major challenge hampering quick execution of projects. The committee members who were thorough during the inspection applauded FEMA for doing a good job on the roads and called on the private sector to take advantage of ongoing road construction and establish functional quarry to boost economic development. The issue of such change will not accept it, whether materials are available or not. This oversight is to ensure Nigerians that the National Assembly will leave no stone unturned to make sure that Nigerian roads are in a better shape. In Iona, Ladibala, NTA News. President Mohamed Buhari has joined the literary world in congratulating renowned academic poet, columnist, and dramatist Professor Ni Oshundare as he turns 70. In a statement by the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishina, President Buhari felicitates with 
all the friends, colleagues, and family members of the literary icon who through courage and the power of the pen have contributed immensely to the political history of Nigeria. The president believes that the subterranean sacrifices over the years can only be rewarded with strong democratic institutions that guarantee free and fair elections and an effective governance that provides security, good health facilities, and sound education to its citizenry. The statement also commends the disciplined, forthright, and diligent spirit of the erudite scholar whose written works already span the globe, attracting numerous awards, and whose voice of wisdom will continue to resonate through generations. The president prays that the Almighty God will grant Professor Oshundare long life, good health, and more wisdom to serve humanity. You're watching the news on Ent International, reaching you from Nigeria's capital, Abuja. Stay on for more report when we return after the break. the news, brainstorm has destroyed property worth millions of naira at the University of Uyo Teaching Hospital in Akwaibom State. The Chief Medical Director, Professor A. Tete Peters, says the destruction has paralyzed the hospital medical activities and appealed to the Federal Minister of Health for urgent intervention. Elizabeth Udoka completes the story. Briefing journalist, the Chief Medical Director, University of Uyo Teaching Hospital, Dr. Etete Peters, says the terrible incident occurred during the heavy rains accompanied by storm. Dr. Peters, who regretted the magnitude of damage the natural disaster has caused, even when they were planning to search for funds to complete the ongoing projects in the hospital, called on state, federal governments, other intervention agencies, as well as the public to come to their aid. The magnitude of damage is uh, beyond the scope of the hospital itself. And that is why we are using this uh, opportunity to call on the federal government the state government, the state management, the emergency management authority, the member, and other interventionist agencies to come to our aid. What is the paramount uh, problem of the hospital now is to restore normal services. As you can see, there is a total disruption of electricity supply to the institution because uh, most of the poles and the all falling off and not falling off. Then um, it's been uh, the damage to the director house, the damage to the central buildings and other uh, parts of the compound that you soon see. The chief medical director and other management staff of the University of Uyo Teaching Hospital led journalists to the affected areas including mortuary block, central building, pediatric department, hospital chapel, three-story radiology block, faculty of technical sciences lecture hall, 
parameter finds among other units. Dr. Tete Peters explained further on the extent of damage in Uyo, Elizabeth Wodoka, NCA News. Similarly, with barely a few months to intense rains in parts of the country, residents of Goli regional affected areas in Calabar, across the state, are having their hearts in the mouth. This is the, the this is the case with residents of Ekot in Kebre lay out as the devastating gully erosion which, which claimed three lives continues to wreak havoc without attention. Justina Etem reports. The magnitude of devastation the Ekot and Kebre ravine has inflicted on residents and landlords in the area. This gully erosion which started years back has sacked many residing in the area with about 35 houses kept in so far. Residents said their hope was renewed when agents of the World Bank visited the area last year with assurance that remediation work in the ravine will soon commence. But said months after then, the ravine has continued to deteriorate due to the state government's inability to release counterpart funding for the project. Newman actually did what we call a bid a publication in the paper to ask for tenders by companies to do this. And we're all overjoyed that this was going to happen. But three months after, we've not heard anything. I want to appeal that government should come immediately. Because the devastating effect that the erosion has caused, destroying the houses, properties, even two persons were lost. If you look at what is happening here, I mean that gutter, is the cause of that ravine. Contrary to these allegations, the project coordinator, Cross River State Nigeria Erosion and Watershed Management Project, Dr. Fidelis Anukwa, said the state government has released about 250 million naira as part of its counterpart funding to spearhead the project. Just to the state government has a passion for Newmark and they accordingly have paid up to date the state's counterpart contribution component of the project. Just last year, he, he released 250 million naira in this period of recession for that work. So counterpart issue has nothing to do with that project. With the release of counterpart funding by the Cross River State Government, it is hoped that remediation work will commence as soon as possible so as to avert the attendant loss of lives and property associated with the gully erosion in the rainy season. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. With the relocation of airline operations from Abuja to Kaduna International Airport, the Nigerian Air Force is assuring the public of safety as they travel along the Abuja Katuna route. Chief of Training and Operations Air Marshal Ahmed Iya gave the assurance during an operational tour of Kaduna. Defense correspondent Isaac Nkuma tells us more. The Abuja Kaduna Highway is notorious for armed robbery and kidnaps, and this is a major concern to airline operators and passengers who now have to travel to Kaduna by road or rail before flying to their destination. The Nigerian Air Force says there's nothing to worry about as the black spots along the highway are constantly patrolled and backed by area surveillance. The patrol had been going on for over three, four months, four months. about four months now. of uh, kidnapping and uh, we've been able to substantially reduce that including even the cattle wrestling uh, and so on that are happening along Kaduna, Abuja and Kaduna Beningwari roads. Uh, we've been able to substantially reduce this with the coordination with the army uh, land uh, operations. So it will, it's, con it's going to continue Air Vice Marshal Inya inspected some facilities and security arrangements within the airport premises manned by personnel of the Nigerian Air Force. He also inspected some projects at the NAV base Kaduna. Isaac Nkuma, NTA News. Fatima Leo now takes us through with some stories making the round around the globe. 
at least 24 people were reportedly killed and 28 others injured after a landslide at a major rubbish dump on the outskirts of the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa. In a report, officials on Sunday said the collapse occurred Saturday night, pulling down about 30 houses belonging to people living on the landfill in Goshil, expressing the fear that the casualty figure may go high. The landslide has existed for more than 40 years and is one of the major dump sites on the outskirts of the capital, which is home to a growing 4 million people. Meanwhile, hundreds of protesters marched in the capital of Guinea-Bissau to demand the departure of the president, Yossi Mariovas, the latest sign of growing anti-government sentiment following an 18-month-long political crisis. The former Portuguese colony in West Africa has not convened parliament for more than a year, and regional talks have failed to resolve deep rivalries within the political elites, raising fears that the drug traffickers could exploit the power vacuum. Elsewhere, the South Korean politician likely to become the next president and an Moon Jae-in has promised justice and common sense as hosted leader Park prepared to leave the presidential blue house and face possible prosecution on corruption. The Constitution Court ruled on Friday to uphold a parliamentary vote to impeach Park, dismissing her from office over an influence peddling scandal that has shaken the country's political and business elites. A snap presidential election will be held on May 9. Fatima Liu, NTA News. For highlights of some sporting events that occurred in the outgoing week, Chukun Nansu is standing by. Thanks for joining us on this week's edition of Sports Roundup. We begin with the game of golf. 